I'm just going to ask um, Caroline Rush, the chief executive of the British Fashion Council, is going to uh, give us a little video intro to this session. So, uh, Andrew. Hi, I'm Caroline Rush. Welcome to London Fashion Week Talks Digital. It's a new series of talks to explore all elements of digital and innovation. The question today is, can you bring real luxury online? This question seems a pretty urgent one for all businesses, but in the fashion space, the luxury space, especially so. Um, this was brought home to me a few months ago. I was in Paris hosting a not dissimilar session to this one with a lot of CIOs, chief information officers who kind of run technology stuff. And the head of LVMH was on, on the panel, a head of digital at LVMH was on the panel. And as I got off the metro to walk uh, to the Hotel Jean V, uh, I found the Louis Vuitton store had a massive queue outside of it. So my question to him was really, in a space such as luxury, where the personal experience is as important as the actual goods you buy, how do you replicate that in an online space? Steven, so let me come to you. Tell me where you were a few years ago when you didn't think it was possible to where you are now. What's changed to make that a viable opportunity and a possibility for you? Um, I think it's, um, uh, you know, we've, we've already heard this word experience kind of bounding around, and I, I think, uh, you know, in, in a jewellery store, uh, certainly in, in our business, we've tried to change the experience that people may have uh, had 10 years ago or, or five years ago. And um, I think since, you know, there's been much more activity for us, real activity, uh, like you said, money in the bank, if you like, from, from the digital possibilities, it's made us really look at, at the experience that we offer in our stores. And... Um, you know, and that never stops. So it, it's quite a dynamic time. You know, you just feel that you can't sit still, uh, whether you're embracing the, the digital side, which I think we're all here because we do do that, but also the impact it has on, on the more traditional bricks and mortar side of our business. People are not just online or offline. Online is prime time, it's all the time. It's about connected devices. The average person has four connected devices, so they're always online. So there's opportunity to engage with your consumer um, at multiple touch points. Can I come to you, Graham, about the, um, the notion of data? Because I think one of the things this raises, everyone's talked about experience, everyone's talked about personalization, everyone's talked about stories and storytelling. But obviously if you, as a small company in particular, work with a, a big company like a Google or a Facebook, um, you know, if the algorithm switches, you're basically screwed. How do you manage that then? Because surely the key thing about this relationship as you build something that's scalable and sustainable is controlling the data, controlling that relationship. How do you manage that? And where do you see all that data bit coming? And how, how are brands telling you they deal with this? Yeah, I mean, for, first, first of all, about data. I think that we use this term data very frequently. No one really um, is, is truly understanding what they mean by data. And I think what data represents is your customer. It, it's just a, a digital representation of what your customer is doing. So I think when you, when you say, what's our data strategy, you should drop the term data and say, what's our customer strategy? So when you start looking at it on, on that lens, you, you start to think of your business in a very normal sense again. I think you know, the other major thing, and I'll come to the Google, Facebook question in a sec. The other major thing that we're seeing here is that I think in about five to 10 years, we'll stop saying online, offline, We'll stop saying mobile tablet. You know, 120 years ago, there was, a head of there was a head of electricity at a lot of companies. And so, you know, which company here has a head of electricity? I just want to check. No one. Good. And so, you know, we all use electricity. I hope we do. Um, and so we all use data. We all want to know our customers. So it's just intrinsic. It's about knowing your customer. So when it comes to what do the algorithms mean for understanding your customer, that's a very important question because the algorithms that you control or the algorithms that are or, or sort of very, very sort of important for your business start to become your actual strategy in this new world. So if your business entirely relies on Google SEO, natural search traffic, that's a risky strategy because you don't control that. Um, now Google allows you to buy ads. Um, you can control that. Um, there's an economic cost to that, but you know you effectively bid on keywords and you can drive traffic to your site. 
you know, Facebook in a similar way, you, you are connecting with users. Um, you, can, you can rely on people naturally talking about your brands. That's the earned media on the newsfeed. Or you can use the Facebook advertising platform to acquire customers. And so I think you can't rely on the algorithms to, to, to grow your business. And nobody can start a business today and say, my strategy is to get to the top of the uh, apps uh, store in Apple or to get to the top of the Google search listings. You will not succeed that way. So you need to go back to thinking, what's my customer strategy? Um, and, and you know, when it comes to algorithms you do control, you know, a lot of, a lot of businesses rely on product recommendation. And product recommendation is a, is, is a very risky thing because, you know, those are the recommended products. That also is a bit of a black box. You need to understand how these things work and prevent your customers from getting stuck in a filter bubble. So, developing a loyalty with your customers, that's key. So, and Tracy alluded to this as well, is making sure you're listening to your customers through these different platforms as well as giving them information. You need to be taking the information to and listening to what they want. Um, I'm less interested in the mass algorithms because I don't think luxury is particularly mass. I think it's something that we need to use algorithms for to narrow it down, to personalize, to talk to customers, to take lots of information and listen, and then give those customers what they want in, in, uh, to their personality. So we're, we're really narrowing down that customer experience um, so that everybody is getting the story that they want delivered to them, the discoveries that they want delivered to them, the information that they need delivered to them wherever they are. Um, Graham and I were talking about this a little earlier. And having stores and having online, it's really important that we marry the two, that when a customer enters our store, that we have an understanding of them, that we have full transparency, that we can talk to them about what they've bought before, how they can build their wardrobe from there. So it's about learning as much as we can from the customer that they want us to know, um, not in an invasive way, and using that information to help them make the choices they want to make. And also to make them have an exciting experience. I think that's key as well. It's got to be exciting. It's got to feel fresh. We've got to deliver newness. We can't be talking about something that's stale, particularly in the fashion space. It's got to be really, really key new news. Graham, when it comes to this kind of the brands you deal with and the people you consult with, I mean, what are the big things that they're confronting? What are the things that really freak them out about this new world? Because there's a lot of change, and all of the people on the panel are all doing very well at it, but no one really talks about when actually it's going all wrong or when you can't afford to do some of this stuff. Or, you know, part of the struggle, it seems to me, is that there's so much uncertainty. It's so experimental, which is amazing if you're used to that, but you kind of think you got the answer, and then all of a sudden, a month down the road, you realize that the model you've designed is no longer relevant. Yeah, I mean, our, 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 we, our customers sort of are as diverse as Jimmy Choo and Bell Staff, for instance, on the luxury side to um, Uniqlo and Topshop on more of the fast fashion. So there's, there's a big difference between what happens with these two types of customers. It's the same strategy. Again, it's replaced the word data with customer. So what are you trying to do with your customer? And it's about looking at how do I create the best possible experience for the different customer stages? And so we're, we're helping a lot of our, uh, you know, our clients are using our technology to unwind themselves from the black box of an algorithm trying to do everything automatically and actually to get them to create customer strategies for a person who's never visited your brand before, a person who looks at your stuff all the time but never buys, and a person who buys from you every week. You know, there are essentially 20 different customer segments based on the stage of journey the, the, the likelihood of that customer to buy, the ability for that customer to buy, and how much money they have um, to make a purchase. And it's about building those strategies out for those different customer sets. And so, you know, to, to some its point, our system is actually allowing much more about mass customization. And mass customization is much more akin to just effective customer strategy, but at scale. And so I think, you know, we, we're, we're, we're entering a world where there's a lot more control around how you talk to your customers. And you know, what we've seen is that when you show an early stage customer how your product is made, it drives conversions by 15, 20% to, um, to, to Stephen's point on that. You know, it's sort of a 20% increase in sales. But if you show that to somebody who's a regular customer of yours and they don't care, it's a, it's a barrier in the journey for them to buy. So, it's, it's a, what is the relevant piece of information you need to show that user at the right time? And that's what analytics and personalization are bringing into the field now. 
um, and it's taking away the risks and it's creating more control. And I think you know we're still looking at websites that are basically a catalog with a, with a with a checkout facility. You know, you, you you go onto these sites and it's like, here's the navigation, lots of choice, thumb through the catalog, lots of crap to look at. You know, that is not a luxury digital experience. And we we are we are, we really need to start to think about what the user needs to interact with at that point and how to get really, really creative about that. And it's a creative process, not just a data process. One of the things that strikes me about London Fashion Week is that people can tweet to each other, follow each other on Instagram, and they come to a place like this, and they say, oh, I follow you on Instagram, you immediately have a connection of some sort. So I think there's a value for human actions, human activities like this. Um, on that note, I'd like you very much to thank our panel, and thank you all for coming and enjoy the next gig tomorrow. <laughs>